All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today, we're going to be looking at a different type of CV processing module, the Dofer A170 dual SLU limiter. Um, you're going to get two SLU limiters in this small package right here, uh, one on the top right here, and then one on the bottom. The next question you're probably asking if you're not familiar with the term slew limiter is what is a slew limiter? So I thought it'd be useful to just kind of cover some of the basic principles or just to get a general idea of what a slew limiter is before we jump into a examination of the two sections. So a slew limiter is gonna do a couple of different things for you. The first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna limit the rise and the fall times of whatever waveform you input. So if you input a, let's say, a sine wave or a saw wave or square wave, uh, it's going to let you limit the rise and fall times. Um, overall, it's going to have kind of a smoothing effect uh, on the waveform, which we'll hear a little bit later. Um, in general, you're going to use this to process control voltages, or also known as CVs. These are signals that are in the sub-audio range that you normally cannot hear. Uh, but there are also some uh, special applications for this module where you can use it with audio. And we'll see a little bit of that a little bit later as well. Now, it can also be used um, as a very specific type of simple attack release, uh, or also known as AR envelope generator. Uh, or you can even use it in one special case with audio as a low-pass filter, which uh, we'll hear a little example of that a little bit later. So that's our little basics discussion of the idea of a general uh, slew limiter, in case you were kind of curious what that is. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the two sections here and see what kind of makes one better or worse than another or what makes you know them kind of equal in a sense. Um, the top section is going to have one control. So you're going to be able to adjust your slew limiter right there. And uh, it's in the range of 0 to 10 seconds. Um, now, according to the manual, ideally, if you have uh, a situation where you want to control more precisely the control voltage going in here, uh, such as in 1 volt per octave, type applications when you're trying to get very precise voltages and notes going over to like an oscillator over here. Uh, you'll want to use this top slew limiter. Uh, and that just has to do with the components that are used in the slew limiter on top versus the slew limiter on the bottom. So accuracy is much better on the top one versus the bottom one. So just make a mental note of that as we go forward. And in the examples a little bit later, you'll kind of see uh, kind of a real world application of how that's going to affect uh, your output. Now you have your standard input here. And of course, you're going to feed in your CV signal or your audio into here. Uh, and then you're going to output it right over here. Uh, a couple of videos back, you may have seen the phase lock loop uh, videos. Uh, we used an example patch with the slew limiter involved. Um, didn't go into too much detail, but I was kind of holding out for this particular segment. So here we are. Over on the right, we have an LED. Uh, this LED is going to give us the status of the rise or the fall parameter, as indicated by the two LEDs right here. Um, now, the plus is, of course, going to be the rise, and the minus is, of course, going to be the fall. So there we go top section of slew limiter. Uh, we've pretty much done a good job of covering that. Now let's go ahead and move on to the bottom one because there are a lot of similarities to the top section. And uh, let's just talk about those. Now the immediate ones are of course you have an input and you have an output. So no brainer there. This is where your signal goes in. This is where it comes out. Uh, but you do also have two extra set of dials over here. Um, and these are going to help you adjust the slew limiter a little bit differently. So this one's going to allow you to adjust manually the rise time, indicated by the upward arrow right there. And then this one's going to allow you to adjust the fall time, indicated by the downward arrow over here. 
you have an additional range switch over here, which is going to adjust the time range of the slew limiter on the bottom. Uh, this is going to be very similar to the Dofer A140 envelope generator, as well as a couple of other um, modules out there. The Let's see, the A145 comes to mind. Uh, that's an LFO where you can adjust the range of the of the module or the waveform, I should say. Uh, so you have three basic settings here. In the center, you have low. That's going to allow you to have a time range somewhere in the neighborhood of 0 to 0.5 seconds. Over on the right, you have a medium time range, which is between 0 and 10 seconds, very close to what you have at the top. And then over on the left, right over here, you have a time range between 0 and it says in the manual to some minutes. So uh, that's going to be sort of your guideline for that. Now, keep in mind, you do want to kind of exercise a little bit of uh, judgment when you're feeding signals in because the, uh, the range of your voltage, like let's say uh, a voltage between 0 and 1 volt and a 0 and 5 volt voltage, you know, those are two separate ranges there. Uh, the 0 and 1 volt voltage is going to go a little bit faster. And I th think they talk about that in the manual a little bit. So um, keep in mind, if it's not getting the effect that you want, uh, you may need to either maybe slow the rate of your LFO or the signal coming in, or maybe do some adjusting here on your A170. So just be prepared for that. Now, as we move over to the lower part of this, we see another LED right here. And this is going to do the exact same thing. You're going to have a minus on the bottom. So that's going to give you a status of the fall time. And then the plus symbol is going to give you the status of the rise time. So there we go. Um, that's going to be a discussion of kind of the basics and the features and functions of the dual slow limiter. Um, in some of the upcoming segments, I do invite you to kind of watch some of those uh, if you are interested in this module. We're going to be looking at uh, some oscilloscope views on how CVs uh, are processed in this and how it actually affects the output, um, as well as some audio examples, uh, maybe incorporating uh, sample and hold so we can hear um, some of that, and then also a little show off of the slew limiter as a low pass filter. And uh, if we, if time permits, we may even show you kind of a comparison of, you know, low pass filter here versus an actual low pass filter, which I have uh, positioned kind of off to the right uh, off camera. So uh, I hope that this uh, video segment was useful for you. Uh, I do invite you, as I said, to come back and watch the next one. Uh, thank you so much for watching and keep on patching out there.